So here's where we get into the ins and outs of Phaser, how to draw text onto the screen. It's important to note at this point, I haven't actually mentioned this. This is actually a canvas element. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up my console anyway, because I want to see if uh, there are any errors along the way, any warnings along the way. Uh, but if you'll notice over on here, you'll actually just see a canvas. This is pretty much how Phaser works. What it's doing is doing all the work behind the scenes using all the helper methods that it has available. And it's drawing this onto an HTML5 canvas. So if we head over to the console again, just keep this open while we are developing. Let's get this text uh, up on the top of the screen. Now, the first thing that I want to do is over in states or pretty much wherever you want, to be honest, I'm going to create a globals folder. This is going to hold all of the kind of global information about our game. And by that, I mean the score, how many lives we have and the points that we've accumulated along the way. So I'm going to go ahead and create an index.js file in here, and I'm going to export an object from this file. If you're fairly new to ES6, this is exactly what we're working with here. You might want to check out the ES6 course that we have if you're struggling uh, with any of the syntax inside of here. So just a pre-warning. Okay, so we know that the score by default is going to be zero. We know that the level by default is going to be one, and we know that the lives by default is going to be three. And of course, we can adjust this uh, any time that we need. So now that we have our globals, how do we add these to our game? Well, inside of our boot file just here, what we could do is add a create method, which is part of phaser, and then we could initialize our global variables. This is this tends to be what I do uh, if I'm building out a little game. So I'm going to go ahead and call a method called init global variables. We're going to go ahead and create this method in here. And notice that we're using a kind of class syntax here. All this is is syntax sugar around JavaScript's uh, object-oriented nature. So all we're doing is basically creating an object here uh, using this kind of syntax, and that is possible due to Webpack. So how do we initialize our global variables? Well, we're going to go ahead and refer to this game, which we're going to be doing a lot throughout the course, and we're going to set a global property to the globals that we've just created and imported from the file that we've just created. So the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and import globals from, we want to go into the globals directory and we wanna go ahead and pluck that out from index. But what we want to do is clone the globals so they're fresh every single time because we're gonna be modifying these and we're kind of pulling them in from a default area. We wanna go ahead and clone these globals. So for example, when we finish the game, we wanna get a fresh version of them. Now to achieve this, I use Lodash and I use the clone method. So if we just go ahead and head over to here, uh, you'll notice that this will go ahead and create a shallow clone of the value that you give it. Uh, of course, we only have a single level to the object that we're exporting, but you can also use clone deep as well. So let's go ahead and install Lodash. What we're gonna have to do is just come out of the uh, Webpack watching, and we're gonna go ahead and do an npm install on Lodash, and we're gonna save that to our development dependencies or our normal dependencies. Okay, so now that's done, let's go ahead and do an npm run dev once again. Let's come over to our text editor, and what we're gonna do is use clone, once we've closed this off, to wrap that in globals. Now, if we go ahead and import clone from Lodash at the top, so let's go ahead and pull this in, that's gonna go ahead and clone that object, set it to our globals, our game.global uh, property, and we're pretty much done. So the reason that we've done this is because once we've booted the game up over in the actual game itself, which we have nothing in at the moment, once this is created, we can go ahead and draw that text to the top. So that's pretty much what we're gonna do now. Now, just to give you an idea of this, if I do a console log on this game global, like so, you'll notice, uh, just to make sure that we spell that correctly, global, if I come over and give this a refresh, we see our globals. So we can increment these, we can decrement them. Of course, we'll be decrementing the lives, incrementing the level and incrementing the score. And that will keep up to date as we redraw to the page. Okay, so how do we go ahead and do this then? Well, the first thing is I'm just gonna call a mess method in here called set up text, just to keep things nice and tidy so we don't do everything inside of create. So let's create this set up text method just inside of here. And let's go for the basics just at the moment. Let's go ahead and say this game add text. And inside of here, we give an X offset, a Y offset, the text that we want, any properties associated with that text. So for example, the font size, the fill color, and all that kind of stuff, how we align it on the page. And then we go ahead and position it. So let's go ahead and just say one, one, 
and let's say hello just to kind of get a feel for this and let's go ahead and give an object in here with a font so let's say 18 pixels Arial and let's go ahead and add a fill in here of black because of course we want dark text on a white background and we're going to say bounds align horizontal and we're going to align this at a particular position so let's say center what we can then do is set text bounds now this is going to get a little bit messy we are going to be refactoring this in just a minute we're going to use a uh, zero and zero for x and y and we're going to reference the game world and the width of it and that's going to go ahead and center align this for us so if we just go ahead and give this a refresh notice that we see the word hello just up there so it's really that easy and of course with the x and y offset we can change this so for example if it was in the center we'd probably say 0 20 and that's going to go ahead and pull that down into the middle for us so that's pretty much how we add text pretty straightforward this does get a little bit of uh, time to get used to if you're new to this kind of thing but let's go ahead and just get rid of this and just cut it and let's think of a nicer way that we can do this and the way that i usually do this is i have a create text method and you could add this in a helper and import it if you wanted to all we're going to do is return exactly what we've just got rid of i'm going to go ahead and pull this down just so it's a little bit easier to read i prefer to do this just so we don't get in the way so let's go ahead and pull this all down just so we can see exactly what we're doing and that's pretty much it so let's pull that down as well and let's go ahead and pull this in so now that we have this method we want to take in an offset an x offset we want to take in a y offset we want to take in the alignment of this which can be left center right etc and the text of course that we want to show so all we need to do now is just go ahead and replace these in so align let's replace this with x offset Let's replace this with Y offset and let's go ahead and replace in, of course, really importantly, the text that we want to output. So we now have a little helper method that we can use to create text and under setup text, which remember we're calling inside of create when the game is created, we can go ahead and create this. So for example, I could say this create text 2020 and I could say left. So this is going to be the global game score. And inside of here, I could say score is X, for example. So let's come over and you can see that we have our score nicely placed over there for us. Now, of course, we want to pull from the game globals. So we're going to go ahead and say this game global score like so. And that's going to go ahead and give us that value that we imported by default. Now we can duplicate this down. We can do the same thing for the center. So I'm going to say zero for the uh, X offset and 20 for the Y. So it stays in the same position on the Y axis. And this is going to be in the center. And we're going to say how many lives that user has. And of course, we're going to pull from our lives. So we end up with the following. Okay, so third and last but not least, we need the level. So this is going to be aligned right. And we're going to say level is, and you guessed it, the global level. And once that connected to browser sync message goes, you can see that we have that here. Now this isn't aligned quite properly because of course we've just duplicated this down. So we're gonna say minus 20 on the X axis. So that just pulls it over very slightly. And once again, when, when that message goes, you can see that we now have our score lives and level ready to go. So now that we've done this, we have our score lives and level. And once we're into the game and we start updating these values, uh, we'll see them repainted to the canvas. And of course we can check these and do certain things based on the uh, lives and the level. So there we go, we've created our text. Let's move on and look at generating the bricks that we're gonna be destroying.